All right, you've made it to the last video of unit zero. Today, we're going to review practice four, argumentation. The concepts in this video are definitely going to come up again in this course, particularly with the FRQs. In fact, many of the topics in this video are task verbs that you will see on your unit tests and the AP National Exam. Propose, support, refute, use evidence, explain, all connect back to you being able to develop and justify psychological arguments by using evidence. To start, let's talk about what it means to propose a defensible claim, something you definitely want to be able to do in AP Psychology. A defensible claim involves a statement or argument that is supported by logical reasoning or evidence, allowing it to be supported in a debate or discussion. You want to start by clearly stating your position on the topic of interest. Make sure you avoid any vague language and don't overcomplicate your position. Now, when making your statement, you want to make sure that the claim is supported by evidence. You cannot base it simply off of your opinion. Oftentimes, people will consider potential counter arguments or or opposing evidence when creating a claim. This is to help anticipate what resistance the claim may face, which will allow them to create a stronger claim. For instance, if we were to debate the impact of violent media on children, I could propose the claim that exposure to violent media increases the likelihood of aggressive behaviors in children, as supported by social learning theory and research demonstrating that repeated exposure to violent content desensitizes children to aggression and normalizes aggressive behaviors. Notice that I've clearly stated a position about aggression in children. I've also embedded into the claim evidence to support the claim. Now, I do want to point out that a defensible claim is different from a hypothesis. Remember, a hypothesis is often the starting point. It's not proven. While a claim is a statement that is presented as truth, Make sure you don't mix these two concepts up. Okay, so we've talked about proposing a defensible claim, but what about using scientifically derived evidence to support, refute, or modify a claim? And I realize that there's a lot going on in that sentence, so let's break that down. To start, let's talk about scientifically derived evidence, which is information, data, or conclusions that are obtained through the scientific method, such as controlled experiments. Scientifically derived evidence is objective. It can be replicated and it went through peer review, making the findings more reliable and based on factual sound procedures instead of anecdotal or speculative claims. Okay, so we know know what scientifically derived evidence is, but how can you tell if evidence is scientifically derived? For instance, say I made the claim that PlayStation was better than Xbox and supported it with Sony's clearly superior game lineup and sales of the console. Would that count as scientifically derived evidence? Well, no, not even close, even though it might be true. To see if evidence is scientifically derived, you should first check the source. Evidence should come from a reputable source, such as experts in the field, research institutions, or peer-reviewed journals. Next, check the methodology of the study. Did the study have a falsifiable hypothesis and clear operational definition set? Was it conducted in a controlled manner where confounding variables were limited? Or did it utilize procedures such as a double blind to reduce the impact of bias in the study? It is also important to make sure that the evidence from the study can be replicated. The more other researchers can repeat the experiment or study and obtain similar results, the more reliable that evidence is. You can also look at other evidence to see if the findings you are examining are consistent with other scientific theories and knowledge that have been established. All right, now once you have your evidence and you are confident it is reliable, the next step is to use it to either support, refute, or modify a claim. When you support a claim, you want to provide evidence and reasoning that explains why the claim should be upheld. On the other hand, when you refute a claim, you want to provide evidence that contradicts the claim and shows why the claim should be rejected. Lastly, you could modify the claim, which would require you to make adjustments to the original claim based on the new evidence. Modifying the claim happens when the original statement has some validity but needs to be adjusted to more accurately reflect the new information. Being able to to support, refute, or modify a claim is an important skill to have, not just for this class,
class, but for life as well. Throughout your life, you will see scientifically derived evidence used to explain different laws, institutional policies, claims, norms, and other societal standards that provide a framework for the society in which we live. Okay, so that was a quick overview of argumentation. Don't forget to take the 10 plus practice quizzes in my ultimate review packet to make sure you are truly understanding all of the concepts in unit zero. Remember, you can check them out today for free. Also, don't forget to check out the answers to the quiz questions on the screen down in the comment section below. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time online for Unit 1.